Hey cats, Ed, Fanta Grape Bud here. After getting some more miles into this shoe, I think it's time for a part two of the Asics Nova Blast 2 versus the rest. So today some more comparisons to be made against this model from Asics. It's proven very popular actually. People really like the Nova Blast and some people don't like it at all. Today I'm going to see how the Rebel 2, the Vomero 16, the Tempo Next Percent and the Liberate Nitro hold up against the Flight Foam Blaster. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel guys, please do take some time to hit that subscribe button and give the bell a whack, along with leaving a thumbs up for the video. You know it makes sense. So first up today against the Nova Blast 2 is the Rebel 2. A strange comparison I first thought after lots of viewers asked for it down in the comments. But then again, maybe they're right. The Rebel 2 has quite a significant weight advantage over the Nova Blast. On foot, you can really feel it, it's that much. I think it's around about 75 grams difference between the two shoes. A vastly different upper and simplicity itself really in the materials. I think the upper here would be Joni Mitchell's original version of both sides now, and the Nova Blast 2 would be the slowed down, updated orchestral version from the early 90s. The midsole foams are quite compressive, but very different in their feel, very airy and squashy in the Rebel 2. And I've got to say it's vastly more nimble you really do feel that on foot. If you need a lot of stability though in the heel, there's not much here. There's a very small heel counter and that's your lot. The Nova Blast 2 is very compressive, but I'd say less stable. I think some of that is due to the larger overall surface area on the outsole of the shoe. There's just a lot more here that's going to make contact with the ground and it provides just a lot more stability. You have the large cutouts on the Nova Blast 2 and I think that that amplifies that feeling of instability somewhat. Price-wise, I mean, there's not much in it between these two shoes, but I think if I could only have one of them, I think it would be the more versatile New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2. The Vomero 16 next. So a much closer one here with similar weights across the models. There were more refined midsole sandwich here in the Vomero 16 compared to the odd angular slab of flight foam blast here in the Nova Blast 2. That's not to say I don't like the Nova Blast 2 over a range of different speeds. It actually feels quite propulsive when you push up the pace. The Vomero 16 though does have some return from those air zoom pockets that are in the forefoot of the shoe. They're just underneath your midfoot pads. I always think of cats when I say that. And of course the Zoom X Core, which I'm quite partial to as well. You know, it's not as in your face as the Pegasus Turbo or the Next Percent, but that's not what you want in this shoe, is it? I found it forgiving on a longer run and nimble enough for some faster paced work too. And I've got to say, it has the edge over the Nova Blast 2 in terms of outsole grip across a range of different surfaces as well. Always feels assured. Pricing's very similar here, so I've got to try and find something to split these two shoes. Stack heights are actually very similar as well. 10 millimeter drop in the Vomero 16 and an altered eight in the Nova Blast 2. I think if you don't get on with those air units that they place into the Nike shoes, and perhaps you're after a lower drop option, but don't mind a little bit of that instability, then the Nova Blast 2 might be the one for you. But if only one pair could be housed in the shoe sanctuary, it would have to be the sleek and airy Vomero 16 on this occasion. I gotta be honest, I think it just smells better. I'm kidding. Just a tad more versatile. I think that's the real reason behind it. Now, a bit of a wild card entry in today's competition. Wilder than a Roy Keane challenge from back in the 90s. The Tempo Next Percent from Nike. The swoosh brand of Oregon. Or China and Vietnam these days. The Tempo Next Percent is a shoe I absolutely love. It's the crash bang wallop of running shoes, isn't it? There's nothing subtle about it at all. Like a drag racing mobile fueled by only nitrous oxide and strawberry chew -its. Bit of a thrill ride this one, by no means a shoe I would ever want to take out on a daily run. It's all about speed this one. I can remember it being extremely cold earlier this year and going out in this shoe and actually being really happy that I'd chosen it because it was so cold I had to run all out to try and keep warm. Not something that feels comfortable or appropriate for jogging, perhaps to the shops for a loaf of bread or a Muller Crunch Corner. Nice slow long run, no chance. As such, I think the Nova Blast 2 has it beaten on versatility hands down, and from a retail price perspective, it's a darn sight cheaper as well. But we've been seeing these shoes reduced down to about 115 Earth credits UK, and that makes 
things a little different. Just makes it a little bit more attractive because the retail price at 169 is it or 179 something along those lines that's not an attractive price and i think that's damaged the sales of this shoe it's damaged the perception that people have of it i think they're less inclined to give it a whirl because of that price yeah people try the zoom fly and things like that don't they because it's a little bit cheaper i mean even the invincible runs cheaper than this one but at discount yeah probably the lucas podolsky at arsenal of the current crop of Nike's running shoes. I'd say the Nova Blast 2 is probably closest to Granite Hacker. It's great for the national side, but useless at club level. Though, if I could only have one in the shoe sanctuary, I think it would have to be the Nova Blast 2. I just think I could get more out of it on a daily basis without destroying myself. But thankfully, I'm lucky enough to have both of them because I love the other one too. But it's not an apples for apples comparison here. I just wanted to put it in there as a bit of a wild card. I was interested to see Jacques Slade recently review the off-white version of this shoe with the strange spikes on it and stuff. He did seem to think it was a full Zoom X midsole. I did drop a comment in there letting him know that it was in fact a nylon plate too. I'm not sure he's going to go out running in those though. I think he'll keep them just for casual use. I think I'll stick with my electric green Jordan 6. Always reminded me of Optimus Prime, that part of the shoe. Last comparison today is the Liberate Nitro from Puma, a shoe vastly lighter and more breathable than the upper that we find on the Nova Blast 2. I think there's almost 100 grams difference between the two shoes in my size at least. A really nimble shoe this one Puma have released and it does at least provide us with some type of alternative with a similar feel I guess to the Pegasus Turbo 2. It's not the same but it's close. It's the closest thing we got. A lower stack shoe here from Puma for those lightning fast blasts. I found it pretty much handles any distance really up to about the half marathon. Not sure I'd want to go too much further than that. I think if you want a bit more cushion or you're perhaps a heavier set runner then the Nova Blast 2 might be a better option in that case. I'm not sure what they put in this rubber on the Liberate Nitro but it's a winner. It's a special type of formula. It's just so grippy. I'd suggest that the outsole that we find on the Liberate Nitro here is far better than we find on the Nova Blast 2. I'm finding the AHA here is wearing down a little faster than I found on the original version of the shoe. And I'm quite disturbed that we've got this stuff peeling off of the exposed midsole foam. That certainly didn't happen on the first version. I mean, the massive difference that we've got here between these two is the price. And there's absolutely no comparison if you're on a budget. You want something light, fun and nimble, Let's go for the Liberate Nitro. I've seen people picking these up for under £50, which is madness. Who want a lower stack or can get away with a lower stack shoe? Perhaps lighter runners as well, who just don't need all of this compressive foam. I can't see the Nova Blast 2 really appealing to people at the retail price at least. As such, if I could only have one pair, personally I'd go for the Puma Liberate Nitro. Feather like features here and I really love that rebound like nitro foam and I love the price so you can't lose with this one. What do you make of my comparisons today guys? Do you concur? If not that's okay but let us know why down in the comments. A musical interlude for you. It's another one of those moments I realise I've got quite a varied music taste. If you're going to run some speed work guys I recommend Motorhead. Two of my favourite tracks are Overkill and Bomber. Both these will give you quite a fast cadence and provide the adrenaline required for that type of work. I really love the grimy and gutsy bass sound that Lemmy had, that wonderful Rickenbacker bass straight into a Marshall stack. It's just a wonderful sound. Part bass and part rhythm guitar almost. And driving riffs as well. There's just everything you need for that type of interval work. Perhaps you're doing some type of longer threshold effort. You need something to really get the blood pumping you know, those days when cold play just isn't going to cut it, whack on some motorhead and it will happen for you, I promise. There's certain periods where they push Lemmy's vocals up a little bit in the mix as well, so you can hear the lyrics. They're always kind of interesting as well. Lemmy's a legend to me, always will be. I know he collected Little Richard records and Buddy Holly records. Uh, he was a proper old rocker. I think my dad may have in fact met Lemmy before at some point back in the 60s when he was part of the Rocking Vickers. I think uh, their van had broken down and my dad helped uh, them to get the van started or at least get it onto the ferry so they could get across to Germany. So go and check them out guys, Motorhead. You won't be disappointed, but other people in your family may not enjoy it. But hey, that's how it is. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video guys. It's always appreciated.
If you haven't done so already, please help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button and also clicking the bell below for notifications of when I launch those new videos for you. It really does help the channel out in terms of the YouTube algorithm as well if you give this video a thumbs up like and also share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.